You know, I'm actually going to have to stop watching really, really, really good films, because I actually want to criticize some stuff. I really want to criticize some stuff, and I'm finding it very, very difficult when I watch really great films like Wild Strawberries and Funny and Alexander. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Good films are great to watch, obviously. Everyone wants to watch good films, because they're good films. And Come and See, for a very smooth transition, is one of those fantastic films. A film that had been on my watch list for some time. I always love the poster for it. It's very neon, very strange, and I knew nothing about it, actually. I used to always confuse it with Beyond the Black Rainbow. It has a kind of similar looking cover, so I had no idea what this was. Of course, I ended up watching it. I'd seen a few films between this, uh, specifically Dead Man, Federico Fellini's Eight and a Half. Although Eight and a Half was fantastic, both I would have had a little difficulty discussing, I feel, and there wasn't a lot I could contribute. But on a side note, I do love Eight and a Half, and I thought that Dead Man was a piece of complete pretentious, or not even pretentious, just, just shit. It doesn't even deserve the title of being pretentious, because that would imply that it actually tried. Fuck you, Jim Jarmusch. So then I stumbled across Come and See. I watched it. I didn't know what to expect. It started out a little slow, so I was a little apprehensive. Eight and a Half and Dead Man were very, very slow, very long films. So I was a bit like, okay, here we go again. I want to watch something a little faster, even if it is a long film, because you can have slow pacing in a long film and you can have fast pacing in a long film. But Come and See absolutely blew me the fuck away and immediately it earned itself a place in my top 10 very, very quickly. It's a little difficult to review a film like this, and I feel like I've said that for Fanny and Alexander, because Fanny and Alexander has this very um, otherworldly feel to it that I was kind of trying to convey for the entire 27 minute discussion of it, but Come and See is a fair bit more material. There are a lot more physical things I can discuss with it, uh, technical aspects as well, but there is still this incredibly disturbing gut-wrenchingly sorrowful, depraved aspect to the film, and obviously I can discuss where that comes about, but it is one of the more powerful films I've seen. I don't really like to throw around ambiguous words like powerful and moving and other words to describe emotions, but it really is. I would describe this as Apocalypse Now on steroids. Um, or the themes of Apocalypse Now really, really done justice. And that's not to diminish Apocalypse Now, because Apocalypse Now is also in my top 10 and one of my all-time favorite films. I'm, it's a little hard to decide between the Redux and the original, because the Redux has some really good scenes, but then it also has the half-hour French plantation scene that's kind of shit, so I don't know. It's a fucking good film, though, and Come and See really is like the themes of Apocalypse Now, of kind of insanity and war, the futility of war, the destruction of war, all the themes to do with war, but just taken from this incredibly raw, disgustingly, brutally realistic uh, take on it. So essentially, Come and See is about the Russian Nazi battlefront during World War II and the genocide of certain Russian Jews. It doesn't go over the Holocaust at all, and there is only really one scene, albeit an utterly brutally disgusting scene that is pretty much a genocide of a country town. But the amazing thing about Come and See is that, well let me preface this by saying that I find the power and brutality from films either comes from the superior, incredibly subtle, emotionally disturbing aspect of it, like characters going against you know, standard values and stuff like that. And then you have physically brutal, uh, like incredibly violent, gory. And that, although is incredibly shocking at first, tends to wear out pretty quickly and eventually you just kind of become accustomed to it and it loses its flair. Best way to have shock, brutality, and utter disgust in your film is to combine emotional brutality and violence. And Come and See does that in just such a disturbing way. I can't emphasize how disturbing this film is. Essentially the film follows a 13 year old boy in Russia named Fleora, and he is digging with his friend and he finds an old service rifle from 
I assume like World War One or some Russian Civil War and so he takes that and then he is taken away by the army or he volunteers to go to the army against the wishes of his family which is a single mother I'm not sure where his father is I'm assuming he's dead uh, and his two sisters so he goes off to the army and that's pretty much right at the beginning of the film he's incredibly dedicated to this idea of fighting and uh, joining the army and some sort of like patriotist aspect I guess and so he's shown being um, very zealous towards his military friends he happily accepts like an entire night duty just because but as the troops are about to march out one soldier says that his boots are falling apart so the commander just says hey why don't you just get the newcomer aka Fleuro why don't you just take his boots and uh yeah, sorry, Fleuro, you can't come anymore. So Fleuro is absolutely fucking devastated because he can't go into the military. And then that is essentially the setup for the entire rest of the film where immediately afterward he meets up with a girl and then Nazi paratroopers start coming down. They start uh, they start doing airstrikes in this incredible sequence where, and I don't know how they filmed this, and there are some fucking serious pyrotechnics in this film where they blow up entire tree lines really really close to this like 13 year old actor so pretty much the rest of the film is just Fleora trying to survive the Nazis he goes back to his hometown and everyone is dead in this really disgusting pile of corpses and the rest is just a kind of emotionally disturbing wreck that I won't really go into a lot of detail about if you have seen the film obviously you're gonna know what I'm talking about because it's essentially the entire film but it doesn't become overbearingly sad like there are some like hopeful aspects to it there is some very very sparse kind of hope and lightheartedness to the film but that is like instantly dashed away such as Fleuro reunites with part of his village and he goes off uh, on a mission with about three other men to go and collect food from a warehouse and then they're just walking along and then two of them just get exploded by a landmine and then the other guy just gets shot straight up in the face when they're trying to steal a cow from someone so it's like, as soon as you're introduced to characters and as soon as you start building up characters, immediately killed off without remorse. And in that aspect, it's really, really brutal. It's brutal in every aspect. I can discuss the physically disturbing things. There is a lot of death, uh, death of civilians, death at the hands of people, enjoying killing that being the Nazis. And it actually, I did mention Apocalypse Now, but there are a few parallels. A few things like the uh, tree line being blown up reminded me of the, the napalm strike at the beginning of the film. But then also there's a scene where Fleur is trying to steal a cow and take it back to the group of villagers he's met up with. And then the cow gets shot and it's bleeding everywhere and he's trying to drag a dead cow across a field. And that kind of reminded me, obviously, of the ox getting decapitated in the Apocalypse Now. So by this stage, it's about halfway through the film. So about halfway through the film when Fleur is trying to drag this dead cow back to his villages, he has to disguise himself as a civilian of this town to pass by Nazi guards. But they end up taking him in and they all round this entire village into this tiny little warehouse space and then they're essentially just sitting up there. Someone tries to climb out a window, they get instantly shot. There are a ton of extras all just running happily towards this building along with the Nazis and then they're all just hoarded in and then everyone starts to freak out as the doors are locked and you know some people will try to climb out the windows but then they're immediately gunned down and there's this absolute utter incredibly claustrophobic panic just like people pushing against this locked door and you can see Fleora kind of like stuck in there but there's about the five to seven minute section of the film where Fleora is just getting pushed around in a crowd and then you just totally lose him for a certain amount of time in this massive crowd being hoarded into this building and then eventually one person says leave the children or hand the children out the window and so all the children get pulled out and then they proceed to burn the building down in front of all these children and there's just these screams from the inside. They just begin to shoot the burning building for absolute overkill and everyone's laughing and all the Nazis are laughing and throwing this. And this sounds very comical and a little bit over the top, but it is just utterly just uh, bottom of your stomach, blood curdlingly disgusting emotionally and physically. It's just the screams of these people contrasted with this, these like, Nazi faces laughing or just just being totally blank the whole time Fleora is absolutely suffering He's had a pretty much terrible terrible experience in the film so far his entire family is dead the few people He tried to get food with are dead and now this entire village is dead and to top it all off A group of Nazis come together and kind of drag him up and they've like they're holding a gun to his head and it's pretty much the most 
famous shot of the film of him sitting there and this Nazi commander has a gun to his head and they're all waiting there and they're all smiling happily and he's just like about to be fucking executed and they're just waiting for someone to take a picture and then they're just sitting there and they just wait and then they confirm the picture's over and then they just chuck him away and walk off and it's just like... Oh, oh fuck! <laughs> just... just so... absolutely... perfectly disturbing with just... A fantastic mix of violence, but also like emotional trauma. But the greatest thing is that they don't ham fist the childhood innocence being destroyed, a child of the hands of war aspect. You're aware of it happening the entire time, and it certainly helps having a child as a protagonist. Pretty much just contrasts the gleefulness and the idealization of war for children, contrasted with what reality is actually like because he's essentially ignored as a soldier by not being killed simply because he's a child but it's really the aspect I would have wanted more out of Apocalypse Now. Of course Apocalypse Now is quite a violent film but it's not openly as disturbing as this. Of course I think Apocalypse Now is a fantastic film. Come and See really shows how you absolutely combine really disturbing violence. There's some very, very shocking stuff in here. I'm not sure if they actually killed a cow on film like they did in Apocalypse Now, if it was already dead. It actually looks like it's shot. Plus, from what I've heard from the behind the scenes footage, actual bullets were used and it really looks like live rounds. There are certain sequences where there are bullets flying everywhere because Leora is getting shot at and it really looks like he's actually getting shot at. Like, they do look like the actual live rounds whizzing past. I don't think blanks work like that. There are a few sequences where they do this um, very interesting effect. So what essentially they do is they have someone in the foreground in focus but then the background is also in focus and I think what they do is they keep the camera in like the same position and then film the person in the foreground and then film them out of the scene with the background in focus and they just splice them together like physically. I have seen the effect in Stalker Maybe it was a lot more refined in Stork if it was done. It looks very, very strange because it's not normal for uh, obviously your vision to be in focus for two things that are so far apart. But they do that a few times when it's a lot of close ups on his face of just the horror he's seeing. And oh my god, it is just the deterioration of his mental state and his character. And mind you, there is not a lot of dialogue in this film, uh, barely any dialogue in the second half. Uh, maybe like a couple of lines at max from his character. There's a fair amount of dialogue from the other characters, but he just gets this look, just the absolute dead thousand yard private pile stare, but like beyond that, and he's kind of just wrinkled and you know, he's seen some shit. And you've seen some shit because you've been watching him see some shit and it's fucking disturbing. So pretty much that shot of him like about to get shot, uh, it kind of pulls away and there's a close up of him and I was like, wow, okay, brilliant film, my god, uh, fantastic. The first half felt a little odd, uh, it was a little slow to be honest, not bad in any sense, it was very, very gripping, but it was still a little slow and I was a bit like, okay, okay, where is this going? But the film actually doesn't end there. It kind of pulls out and all the Nazis just leave, I guess. And he's just left there, just like in an absolute state on the ground. And I'm like, okay, odd choice. I really, you know, it really felt like it was just gonna end on this one shot. It would have been the perfect climax of like, they don't decide to kill him. He's worth nothing to them. Perfect, perfect ending. But it doesn't end there and I got a little worried and I'm like, okay, how much longer is this going to go on? You don't really need to introduce any other plot elements, what more have you got to say? But it turns out that uh, as some of the Nazis are driving away, the force that left Fleora in the beginning, the ones that said, you can't come with us because you have to give your shoes to this other guy, sorry, you can't come, you're not, you know, really worth it. They come back and they somehow take out a Nazi convoy and Fleuro walks upon them under a bridge and they've got a bunch of Nazis there and there's one translator who's translating from Russian to German uh, begging for his life and the person who said that all the children should come out of the burning building so they could be spared he's there and eventually the the Germans saying oh no we're not Nazis we're not Nazis we're Germans we don't care we don't care and Fleuro pretty much walks up and confirms that this guy pretty much had to go ahead to burn an entire village of people but to spare the children and so then all the Nazis are burned alive and then shot and it ends with just the most perfect perfect sequence so Fleora's reunited with the army camp he was with at the beginning the commander's there and he's kind of looking at him and he 
kind of shows appreciation of him, but Fleuro walks away, he still has this muddy, barely even operational uh, service rifle. And he walks up to a puddle and there's a framed picture of Hitler uh, in this puddle. And you know, he just aims his gun down to it and he just starts shooting it. And it just begins this incredible sequence. It's pretty much a Wagner and some other classical music uh, that the Nazis would have used to the rhythm of him just continually just shooting, reloading, shooting, reloading, shooting, reloading. As it plays this archival footage of Hitler and the Nazis all in reverse and that goes on for some time but it's just an incredibly powerful sequence to the end of this film. Like, you have this oddly formulaic justice aspect of, oh, the Nazis got what was coming to them, they were burned alive, they got what they deserved, karma sort of aspect. But then you see that, obviously, Fleurioro will never be the same. He's had to endure the most awful experience, and it's just him just shooting Hitler's face over and over and over again. And as this archival footage plays very epileptically in reverse, and every time he shoots again, it shows Hitler's face, and the film wavers and jitters all over the place. And eventually, it ends with just a very, very slow focus on a old picture of his mother and then down to him as a baby and then a last bullet shot and if that wasn't enough and i really thought it would end there again because that's like oh my god i jesus like okay i now understand what more you wanted to comment and that was only in 10 minutes and i really didn't expect it to do that and that's just the perfect elevation you know the destruction of his own character the destruction of innocence nazi justice but it's very very pyrrhic and then it ends even, fuck it, it just keeps uh, getting more and more fantastically disturbing. Mozart's Requiem begins to play, and I noted in the beginning credits it said, some music is by Mozart, and I was like, okay. And some classical music does play in it, and I was like, okay, are they just using one of his, you know, less famous pieces? But I'll play Requiem now. That's probably out of time. This is Requiem. You've probably heard it. One of his very, very famous pieces. It is often very overused in films because it's so powerful as a classical piece. It's like how overused Moonlight Sonata is, but I would very, very arguably defend that this is the best ever use of Mozart's Requiem in a film, and probably the most perfect use of it to just absolutely close out the sorrow and sadness and depravity of, of, of just human nature just witness in the film. And it all sounds really pretentious, but really it's fucking absolutely moving. But one of the very, very few films I've cried at that uh, deserves the honor of making me weep. <laughs> one of the most in-depth discussion of themes I've seen in a film that has so minimal dialogue and relies so heavily on the visuals. It's incredible that you're able to convey something that profound without dialogue. Dialogue is relatively easy to just pretty much state your theme, or you can mask it behind other things, but visual storytelling is very, very difficult, and it's just handled perfectly, perfectly here. The actual quality of the film isn't too great. The best quality I could get was what looked like a VCR rip, where it sometimes has those, like, a uh, pink or green splodges down the background, and the film itself is incredibly grainy. I'm assuming that's because a lot of it is in the moment, kind of shaky cam, action-y sort of thing, and it looks a bit like 16mm. This also certainly is a Russian film. Russian cinema I would define as being on top of just, you know, standard stuff like very, very long still shots, very quick panning, uh, something that they like to do, and the Swedish like to do, because they're weirdos. And that's pretty much about it. It's just a utterly disturbing, disturbing film. I'm not really sure who I'd recommend this to. Pretty much, it, it's, it's always difficult to recommend sad films. Personally, when I'm watching kind of artier films, I don't go into them purely for enjoyment. It's very nice to have enjoyment out of them, but I can take enjoyment out of it from it being an art form and from recognizing quality and noting quality and, you know, seeing interesting themes discussed, interesting ideas discussed, interesting visuals, interesting techniques, but it is always a little difficult to recommend 
very, very sad, disturbing films. This is certainly a film of utter quality. I would really recommend this to anyone. It's not something you really want to watch, but it's something you should watch because it's a very, very interesting discussion of human nature. An interesting look at it, but not even with a, a whiff of sentimentality or anything. It's just this very raw, brutal film, and yeah, I fucking absolutely adore it. So that's what I thought of it. What did you think of it? Uh, how fucking full on is that last sequence? Holy shit. Um, if you want to discuss it, obviously chuck it down in the comments. I'll probably talk about it with people. The other shenanigans. Do the things. Farewell.